Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. How long is each stage of fracture healing when you have a broken bone? Well, that's what we're talking about today on the Doc on the Run podcast. Now, everybody who has a fracture wants to know, when can I actually run? It's not that simple. Number one, it really depends on when you have enough strength in the bone that you know it will withstand the forces of running without it breaking again, obviously. But it seems like that's not so obvious to all the people that post questions and and send me emails and comment. The reality is, is that it depends on what you have done. It depends on your physiology and it depends on these timelines, but it does not wholly depend on these timelines like everybody wants to think. So I thought it might be useful to talk about this in more detail. There are basically six stages of fracture healing, and what is written in textbooks, like uh, the Sonography of Fractures textbook, for example, uh, talks about six very specific things. This is the kind of stuff we're taught in med school, and this is what people want to think means when you start running, but that's not true. And we're going to discuss as we go through this. So the first thing is stage one. So you break the bone, right? And stage one is basically from day zero to day 10. And what that means is that you break the bone. It's broken, right? It's in two pieces. It's broken. Okay. So what happens? Well, you get a blood clot that forms. So in that early, early phase, you know, you have blood vessels that are in the bone. And when you tear those blood vessels, because you broke it, it bleeds. And so you get a blood clot. It bleeds in between here and it forms a blood clot between the two pieces of broken bone. And that starts to change over those 10 days, um, forming what we call a hematoma, which is just a firm congealed blood clot. That's the first phase. Second phase, well, obviously starts somewhere around days 11 to 19. This is where you get initial soft callus. So I've talked about this in a number of different episodes, but basically you've got your fracture here. And day 11 to 19, that blood clot actually starts to change. So not only does it have the uh, blood in between there, but you start getting some, um, some actual collagen fibers, some fibrin, uh, but there's strands of collagen that basically form within the blood clot, and that actually starts to kind of hold it together. Like if you look at duct tape, for example, it has fibers in it that make it a lot stronger. So it starts to become a more stable glue during this period of initial soft callus formation uh, where you have fibrin. So that's um, soft callus uh, with the fibrin strands in there. Stage three uh, goes on from about three weeks until uh, a little over a month. And so stage three, what happens is that you have a bridge callus. And this is where, uh, again, you have your bone here, the fracture. And now what you're getting is that instead of just having this, these little strands of collagen kind of holding it together within this glue, you start to get um, some mineralization. And uh, in this time is the earliest it's going to actually begin to show up on an x-ray. Now during these phases, uh, I'll probably do another episode on this, but during these phases you can actually see this on ultrasound. And you can see this progression better on ultrasound than you can on x-rays. So it starts to become stronger because you're starting to get some minerals deposited in there in the fracture site. Day four, day 30, or stage four from day 36 to 49. That's where you got, again, you got your fracture here. And what's happening, uh, during day f- stage four is where you're really getting a drastic increase in the strength of the bone because now you're actually starting to get calcification. So where it's fractured, where you've had that blood clot, where you've had the soft callus form, not only do you have the fibrin kind of 
glue holding it together, but now you're actually starting to get the calcium deposit in there that shows up on x-ray is what looks like actual bone. And so um, that is actually where it's kind of welded together instead of just glued together. So it's getting a lot stronger in this stage. Now at this point, we know that you're, you're okay to run if we see this on an x-ray, but during stage three, that's different. So stage three is really kind of the critical phase. And uh, what's going to happen, I think, is most people are going to watch this and they're going to incorrectly think that because I said this is the critical phase at your stage at, at grade th stage three, um, that they're going to think this 20 to 35 days, as long as you make it past, that's okay to run. Not necessarily, but it is the critical phase because during that time, either it becomes stable and becomes way more solid enough that it actually starts to mineralize during that time or it starts to become a non-union where it's not going to heal. This is also the time when people make a critical mistake. It's where they actually force too much activity and it starts aching again. And now they're actually really delaying the healing of the bone and they're really putting themselves at risk of having to have surgery later because it becomes a non-union. That's what I mean by this being um, the critical stage. Um, That's the most important, is getting through that part. That's really the, the most important thing, is to get past this stage. Not And that does not mean just make it to 20 days or just make it to 35 days. That's not what I'm talking about. But if you get through that, you get to stage four, then we actually see that it's on an x-ray. The other reason this is important is that most doctors will wait until this happens before they'll let you do any activity at all. That's not what I necessarily recommend. So for most people that I talk to, I try to figure out how can we actually start activity that gets you exercising before you're actually past the critical stage? How can we maintain your running fitness during all of this time up to that so that when you get to this stage, you're actually really ready to run, not just trying to get off the couch? That's the most uh, important thing for injured runners, I think. Now, stage five. Stage five is when you're from day... 50 to uh, 89 and during this phase what happens is where you've had the fracture uh, not only can you already see it on x-ray not in all that fibrin and stuff is starting to get resorbed but actually what you get is a whole lot of extra thickness of what we call hard callus that's visible oftentimes as a lump on the x-ray right where the fracture was and that big thick callus is very, very stable. And so um, the callus thickness during the stage five, uh, actually the, not only does the bone get thicker, but what you also have that you won't see on x-ray, but you could see on ultrasound is that you'll have this area of fluid basically here and here that you can see on, uh, on ultrasound where you've had fluid over here, where all this healing process is taking place during the soft callus phase until it starts to actually mineralize. And then when you get to this phase, if you do ultrasound, that layer of fluid starts to go away. It gets very, very thin. And so that's one of the reasons we can know when I'm looking at you with the ultrasound unit that, uh, that that is actually changing. Stage six is really mostly remodeling. So uh, I think this can go on for like up to a year and a half personally, but What's written in the textbooks is from uh, day 90 to 140. And what's happening during that time is that this callus is getting thinner at that point. So it's still going to be there. You're still going to have a lump, but where you have had that fracture line, it actually, uh, you, you know, the, the thick dark line where you've had this fracture so visible on the x-ray, it gets very, very obscured and you start to see these trabeculation lines across it on the x-ray, and this callus gets thicker. So what's happening during that phase is the, you have a balance of two cells called, os called osteoblasts and osteoclasts, and basically one of them goes through and eats these channels of bone, and then another cell comes down and lays down tubular, sort of well-formed, much stronger bone, kind of like a whole bunch of, uh, like, if you took a bunch of rebar and wired it all together, well, if you do that, it's all going to be stable because it's, it's um, linear. They're, all those tubes are linear and they're all wrapped together, much like the uh, cables inside the Golden Gate Bridge or something. 
but basically you get all this remodeling going on during that phase where the bone becomes significantly more stable, a whole lot stronger, and as a result, the lump of bone around it gets uh, kind of dissolved over time. Uh, so it's still, just because you have that callus doesn't mean, you know, many years later doesn't mean that it's not completely healed. It probably is completely healed, but it's all about the amount of stability. And the really critical piece here is that you don't just think that the timeline means it's okay for you to run. That's not true. You need to really be thoughtful about this. You really need to figure out where you are in this continuum and you have to do everything possible to maintain your fitness while you go through this process of healing the bone. If you want to check more about stress fractures, I made a thing for you. It's a deep dive into uh, metatarsal stress fractures and what it really means with injured runners and uh, how you can navigate some of this better. You can get it for free. It's at docontherun.com slash stress fracture masterclass. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, please like it. Please subscribe. Go check out the stress fracture masterclass and I'll see you in the training. Doc on the run. We help injured runners run.